Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live for October 1st, 2020. I'm Joe Lynch. This is the state delegation update. Today's moderator and guest with me is State Senator Pat Jalen. We are also pleased to be joined by three restaurateurs from both Somerville and Cambridge. We have from Mike's Food and Spirit, Maria DeSisto, Jess Willis from the Independent Restaurant Group, and she is also one of the chairs of the Chamber of Commerce Advisory Group for Restaurants and Hospitality, and from the ZA and Ivu Restaurant Group, Steve Curlin. Welcome to you all, Senator Jalen, let's start with you. There are some um, disturbing practices that are now going on within the restaurant industry and the hospitality industry by certain food uh, and services delivery entities. Um, it was probably not too long ago that if I mentioned the words uh, Grubhub and DoorDash and Postmates and Uber Eats, probably most of us wouldn't have known what those were. But they have come front and center during the pandemic. Um, those entities are saying they provide an extremely valuable service to the restaurant industry. Yet there are many more within the industry itself and even customers who use those services saying that some of those practices, the services and the fees are downright criminal. I, that's my word, Senator Jalen. So I want to turn it over to you. I know you've been working with the industry for a while. You have some things that you're, you're doing at the state house level, but why don't we take it from there, um, your understanding of what the restaurant industry needs at this point. Uh, I would never speak for the industry. So that's why we invited these uh, three guests to talk to us. So I am hoping to hear from them both about what their experience has been during the pandemic, what has helped, what has hurt, and what you need now. So I wonder if we could go to them and I expect that we will pretty quickly get to the question of delivery services. And uh, as you probably know, as everybody knows here, uh, the house passed um, an economic development bill or it, has, it actually passed a, uh, an actual bill to cap delivery fees um, at less than half of what they mostly charge. So I would like to hear, but I would like to hear first from each of the restaurateurs, what your experience has been and uh, what you need now. So you wanted to go in alphabetical order? Or? Well, why don't we start? Why don't we start with a guest who doesn't operate here in in Somerville? Um, okay. The other two are very well known, Maria and Jess. Why don't we start with Steve Curlin from the ZA and Evo Restaurant Group? Steve, you're over in Cambridge at this point. Tell us your experience. Sure, uh, I'm in Cambridge, and for those of you who don't know, we have two restaurants located right next to each other. They share a kitchen, they share a bar, they share a private dining room. One is Evu, more upscale, and one is Za, which is uh, up, casually upscale pizza salads. Uh, when, the, when COVID hit, we closed Evu right away. It was gonna be too expensive to operate. So we're basically operating within the space of both restaurants, but only operating Za. Uh, our sales have plunged. Uh, we're in Kendall Square, which is a high area for workers, but not a high residential area. And there's not really a giant draw here, like a movie theater or something that's gonna bring a lot of people in. So uh, we became extremely dependent on our takeout sales. We went from probably 10% takeout sales between the two restaurants, to now we're at about 70, 75% takeout sales. So there's no question that the, um, the company, the delivery company's pocketbooks have gone up, uh, how they're taking that money in, but the, the sales that have converted to takeout from what I'm hearing from people are, are universally large. We have a giant patio uh, and our other big concern is as winter hits and that patio closes, how is that gonna affect our sales and will people move inside? My early guess is some will uh, based on my experience. I'm happy to talk more about delivery fees as we get there. Yeah, Jess, why don't we bounce over to you? Almost all of some your restaurants are in Somerville. 
Um, so I've got restaurants in Davis Square, Foundry and Saloon, and Union Square, the independent and brass union. And um, since, since the crisis began, since restaurants closed, I've also been um, meeting over Zoom almost weekly with um, restaurant operators all over the city. Um, the Chamber of Commerce has organized these weekly conversations. It's part therapy session, uh, part problem solving. Um, so I think I have a pretty good sense of what, what people are dealing with across the city. Sales are down, way down, 50, 60, 70% from last year. Um, if you already had a strong takeout and delivery business, you might be doing a little better. But businesses that are built on community, built on gathering, coming together, neighborhood restaurants, um, you know, that none of that is happening right now. Uh, so we're in pretty, pretty, pretty rough shape. Um, if you're lucky right now, you've got three revenue centers. You don't have your bars, um, but you have patio if you're lucky. Uh, you have some limited indoor seating, maybe, and you have takeout and delivery. Um, for us, takeout and delivery, we were we were more of a full service restaurants. All of our businesses were. Some of us were more bar centric. Um, takeout and delivery was about three percent of our business prior to COVID. Three to five percent. Um, right now, it's about fifteen percent. Um, there have been points this year when it's been a hundred percent, and we anticipate as the weather gets colder and outdoor dining starts to uh, diminish a bit we're gonna be relying more and more on, um, on delivery. And it's a lifeline for us right now, really everything, uh, every opportunity that restaurants have right now to generate revenue, it is not about profit, it is about survival. Um, people need to understand that every, every dime that's coming into restaurants is going to our employees, creating jobs, it's going to our landlords, and whatever overhead you know we can we can pay we're taking a massive hit and you know throughout this uh crisis there's been a lot of talk you know that the phrase we're all in this together right um you know so that's you know from my perspective that's what we're looking for from from the delivery services uh that that sense of like we're all in this together we're taking a massive hit everyone's taking a massive hit we're not asking them to cut their fees forever. We're just asking them to be in this with us, help us get through this so that on the other side, we all have businesses uh, to operate. Thanks, Jess. Maria, you, are, you, you cover a lot of bases in what the other two restaurateurs were talking about. You're, you're local, you have um, a good clientele, it's very well known, and the pandemic afforded you some additional real estate um, to move outdoors. Why don't you take it away? Hi, everybody. Pleasure to be here. Um, for those that don't know know me, um, we have been in, my name's Maria, we've been in the square since, oh, I don't know, the late 70s, early early 80s. Um, so we've, we've seen a lot over the years. Um, just to give you kind of a, you know, like push it back six months, we have been open for takeout and delivery since the pandemic hit. Um, I'm coming at it from a different angle because I'm a little bit more informal than Jess and certainly Steve. Um, it's much, much more casual dining. So I might play devil's advocate a little, a little, a little bit um, once we get into like the delivery fees and, and whatnot. Um, I can tell you that um, I feel right now like I am operating as a seasonal restaurant. Um, with year-round expenses. Um, I've been very, very fortunate with um, my, my real estate and my patio. I have a very large patio right now. Um, before the patio hit, I was primarily relying on third-party companies. Um, my, a lot of my revenue pre-COVID was foot traffic, um, and that all completely came to a halt um, once the everything shut down and you know a lot of my revenue as well pre-COVID came from the overflow from places like Jess um, and the night business uh, so that that all came to a, a screeching halt so I was left very much from March 
in, from you know the end of March, April, May, until we open back up in June, relying on the Grubhub of the world and DoorDash and Uber Eats. Um, and I had a pretty strong takeout and delivery business prior to COVID, so I, I, I have my hands are really wet in what it entails and how they kind of operate. Um, moving moving forward, you know, I, I think no matter what side of the restaurant industry you're coming from, formal, informal, casual, you know, we need long-term help. We need long-term goals. It can't just be about, you know, the next couple months. We need to see, you know, how our, our local municipalities are going to help us the next 18 months, you know, next into the spring, into the I think a lot of our frustrations come come with last minute planning and last minute figuring stuff out at the very last minute and we're left to kind of scramble and to see how we're gonna get the, the means and, and the things that, the, the resources we need to survive the next couple months. Um, and, you know, I think, me personally, you know, my frustration, my frustration tends to happen when one municipality is doing one thing and then you go across city lines and someone else is doing something else. So it's, it's very, very frustrating. Um, as far as third party companies, I, I think, and again, I am going to play devil's advocate a little bit because I've, there's a fine line, I feel like, because as a small business owner, we don't have the means or the revenue to reach the amount of people that the grub hubs of the world are going to reach. I think that's a fair statement to make. We, we all understand that. Um, that being said, I think there's not enough transparency on a state level or a federal level. I, I hear it all the time from customers that they're not knowledgeable in the fact that restaurants pay such a high fee. There's, there's no, there's no federal mandate or state mandate that mm. the company have to, have to release that type of information. And as we all know right now, information is power. So I, I think if there was a more transparency and, and the consumer knowing that, you know, this is where their money's going and, and they can order directly through the restaurant and save the restaurant a substantial amount of money, I think a lot of people would. Um, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with how people use the services. Because if you are a small business owner and you have, you are employing out of, you know, your own revenue, your delivery drivers and your, you know, your, your own people to deliver the food, you shouldn't be paying the same fee as somebody who's outsourcing their delivery drivers through Grubhub or through DoorDash. So, so there's, there, there's, different, there's different ways to look at it. And I, I, I think that they should be more than willing to help right now in our time of need. Um, and I, I think we, we have to find a, a, a fine line, but I know personally that throughout, you know, the shutdown, I had trouble with, with, I had, there were moments when Grubhub was peaking and my menus weren't being uploaded. Um, customers weren't being able to see them. It would be Friday night prime time at six o'clock and I, I would have customers, customers calling me saying, I can't load your menu on Grubhub. And when I would call them, they would say they don't know or there's too many, there's a, you know, such an influx of restaurants right now signing up. We're having issues, and I'm at their I'm at their mercy. Yeah. So what, Maria, what do you do, Maria? I want to I want to stay on the topic of dealing with third party vendors and what your expectations are as restaurant tours. But I want to bring it back and set this up just slightly so Senator Jalen can take it away on the fee part. I did some digging. What makes up these fees? that these companies charge. There's a delivery fee. There is surge pricing. There's a service fee. There's a small cart fee. There's a delivery minimum. And then some of the merchants 
add another fee to that. So at the beginning of this, you know, I, I don't know if it was on camera or off camera, and I had mentioned that some of my research says those fees can add up to 25% of the bill, and they can go as high as 91% of that bill. And, and I think what Senator Jalen is trying to get um, is assistance where 91% seems outrageous to me. And I understand what Maria is saying is that there are things that you need. You need these delivery services, but you don't want to be paying exorbitant fees and prices because that eats into your bottom line. Senator Jalen, what can we do in manipulating, or not manipulating, but in getting these companies to keep those fees manageable? Well, the first thing I want to say is I agree with Maria that transparency is key. And as, as consumers learn about the predatory practices, I hope we will start calling restaurants directly. When you go to um, search for a restaurant, even you write in the restaurant's name, the first um, sites that come up are not the restaurant. They're for the delivery services. And once you click that button, the fees start. You may not even pre you may not only make a phone call or ask them a question, and already they start char making charges. I haven't heard that from these three, but I have heard it from another restaurant, which had to hire someone part time to contest illegal fees. That we have. Um, so, I want to just I want to back up a minute and frame it a little more because we didn't do it at the beginning about the danger to uh, small or independent restaurants. We were so scared at the beginning uh, when we heard from the Mass Restaurant Association, they expected 25% to close across the state. That's, a, that's of all restaurants, but the ones that are at risk are the smaller restaurants that don't have the backup of national, um, capital. Uh, and I think the expression of um, a seasonal business with, with year-round expenses is so useful to think about. Anyway, I'm just extraordinarily concerned about it. I have, I'm asking restaurants to send me their contracts. The highest I've seen is 25%, 20% for marketing and 10%, 23% for marketing and 10% for delivery. So it's not even the delivery that they are charging for. So then, and I know um, Steve and Jess have both told me about a, ter a terrible practice, which is that even if you don't have a contract, you can get an order direct. Do you wanna talk about that, either one of you? What happens? So if you, um... So the way it works is that I've had this happen to me at, on different services. They post my restaurant without my permission and they put up menus. Maybe they're current, maybe they're not. And then a guest will call the company assuming, oh, I can get uh, pizza through Grubhub, which we don't use. And Grubhub says, sure, no problem. They take the order. Then they have a representative from Grubhub call the order in and then that represent, then they send out a driver to pick it up using a credit card. The whole thing looks like it's a regular guest picking up an order. In fact, we have no control over the order. Once we don't know how it ends up at the guest, we don't know if that driver pulls over for a break and takes 10 minutes and all our food's cold. Additionally, we don't know what kind of charges they're putting on. And, and you know, all these small businesses take our reputation so seriously that we have no option to make up any mistake or fix anything. Uh, so we get, you know, we, we get, we don't, all we're getting paid for is our regular food as it is. Uh, in addition, when you go to try to get out of these problems and call these companies, it's very complicated. I, I spent a good week calling once or twice a day to various people to get off a site that I'd never signed up for. Uh, this has happened to me with Grubhub and Postmates. Um, so that, that's one of the deceptive practices we, we definitely see. I can see Jess nodding. She's had the same, same thing happen. <laughs> We've had the same experience and the same frustration trying to uh, get ourselves unlisted 
And, um, you know, the, the most frustrating thing is that it's, it's not a great experience for the, the consumer, the guest, because, you know, oftentimes, as you said, Steve, um, these are old, outdated menus. They phone in an order. It's a menu item that's no longer available. We say, oh, that's not on the menu. And they, oh, just substitute something similar. And, you know, does the, does the person have food allergies? Does the person, you know, want something similar? They're, they're just kind of making these decisions for guests. When the food arrives at my house, if it's, if it's something I didn't order, who am I upset with? I'm upset with the restaurant, right? It looks like it was the restaurant's mistake. Um, and that's our brand integrity. And um, we have no control over it in, in those situations, you know? I can just add one thing. We have a, we're on a strip of restaurants here and we're the only one remaining open at this point. Mm. But further down the strip is an Indian restaurant that closed in mid-March. And next to it is a liquor store that's open. It's a great neighbor. And that guy says that four or five times a day, somebody comes to pick up an order from this closed restaurant. <laughs> so what's happening apparently is that somebody, they're listed on the website. They probably don't know. They haven't been made aware. They're not looking actively because they're not in business checking their stuff. And what happens is that somebody calls, they say, sure, we'll get delivery. They probably send it to somebody's voicemail. They send the driver to pick it up. There's nobody there. We've had several people stop in and ask us, hey, what's going on with that restaurant where I'm supposed to pick up an order? And I say, well, they've been closed for seven months. So uh, you're not gonna be able to pick up that order. <laughs> so I think there's, there's several things at play. One is, because it is a, an oligopoly, there is very few, even the existing delivery services are merging. Uh, many restaurants feel that they don't have a choice. Uh, but so people say to me, well, why do they sign these exorbitant contracts? And what I understand is that you sign an exorbitant contract or you don't use their services, but you can't stop them from listing you. I mean, that's one thing I've noticed is that I did, I looked at the Grubhub mem menu and the prices were higher to order through them. So I was paying extra and you were paying extra. So I, I think the first step is for consumers not to, to be more aware and to be transparent. I like the idea of transparency uh, being required somehow um, in the in the advertisements, I will pursue that. Um, but I think in terms of I've been trying to get people uh, to make consumer protection complaints to the attorney general, um, but I don't. I haven't reached out beyond the few people I know. And uh, I, as far as yesterday, I, I they had received two complaints, so they're not going to launch an investigation and unless we give them more examples. But I, for a restaurant to have to contest fees or to contest being listed on, without their consent, that's not effective. That's, you don't have extra time, I'm guessing, in your day to, uh, or you know, extra money to hire lawyers. Uh, I think we need the attorney general to step in uh, for predatory practices. Senator Jalen, can I let me go over to Maria for one second? There's something I'm I'm trying to get in my head. Uh, Pre-pandemic, Maria, did you have your own delivery, folks? Yes, I I, I always have, and it's my understanding that, um, and I you can't quote me on this because I was trying to do my due diligence um, the past couple of nights um, and work got the best of me at some point. But there are so, for instance. I have my own delivery drivers. I get an order from Grubhub. My people that I employ, that I pay, will deliver it. There's other mm. places that don't have those resources or those, you know, those employees that they outsource them to Grubhub's delivery drivers. So in that aspect, you know, Grubhub clearly has, with that particular order, a, you know, a larger expense because they're employing their own delivery driver and so forth. So. The, the fees shouldn't be the same. Like if I'm using my people and the guy down the street is using Grubhub's delivery, like our fees should not be the same. 
And I don't Maria, think they are. Oh, you're saying that if you make a cap, it should be separate for marketing and delivery. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, it should, it should be, if I'm paying 30% and I'm using my own drivers and right. they're paying 30% and they're using Grubhub, Grubhub's drivers, like there's, there's something wrong there. Mm -hmm. Maria, that's what I was trying to get at is that pre pandemic rest, certain restaurants that I ordered from, I know those are their own drivers. They're paying those drivers directly. Correct. It appears as though what's happened to me, and this is at the root of what Senator Jalen is trying to get at, is that the pandemic has offered an opportunity for organizations like all these third-party servicers. I don't want to pick on Grubhub because there's DoorDash and Postmates and Uber Eats and everybody else. That afforded them an opportunity, and my words, Senator Jalen, for some predatory pricing. Absolutely. Like I, I know, not to cut you off, Joe, but I, I know for a fact that re friends of mine that have, you know, signed up with, with these third party companies during the, you know, dur during the shutdown and when we were only left with takeout and delivery, they were being charged even higher commissions and higher fees than if you signed up six months prior. Well, we do have, we do have municipalities across the United States that have come down hard. Um, we also have state government that has taken a very hard action against these. And I think, Senator Jalen, that's what you're trying to get at and you're trying to do. But the question comes in, and I see all three of these faces, and I don't see joy for the coming months. What they're looking at is every penny counts to these restaurateurs. How fast and how realistic is the Commonwealth be able to get some relief for them? whether it's the predatory practice or capping the commissions and the fees, or can we do that at the local level? I think the Cambridge City Council, and Steve may be able to correct me, has been told that they can't do it locally. Is that, they tried. Cambridge tried to pass a, a delivery fee cap a long time ago, April maybe, and it, it, they couldn't do it. Uh, they weren't, weren't allowed to do it at the time they, they tried. Um, they've been very supportive in general, but they, they couldn't get that through in any way. Steve, I'm just wondering, inquiring minds here, was that at the advice of city council, uh, city solicitor, or was that at the advice of the state? I'm, I'm not sure. I would guess it was the solicitor. I wasn't at that meeting. I, I didn't find out about it until later. Okay. okay. Senator Jalen, back to you. So I think the first message here is going to be, oh, so what can we do? The first thing I'm doing is telling all my constituents, call the restaurant if you want to do takeout. And please do takeout and delivery because we need to, we need to help each other. And if you could help other uh, a restaurant survive and still have a nice meal, why not? That's a good plan. Um, there are things that we've done. Um, allowing uh, boxes early with uh, when people couldn't do takeout. Uh, we've allowed uh, wine and liquor to be delivered. We've allowed to go cocktails. We've allowed the outdoor dining. Um, I think this is the unfinished business that is before the Conference Committee on Economic Development and before the Senate. And so, of course, I am working at the Senate level. Um, but I think we need, I think it's going to take both the legislature and the attorney general. I, w I would leave no stone unturned and I wouldn't count. I would, I would just, that's what I would suggest because I do think the future of small restaurants that we value is at stake. Well, Senator Jalen, for that work and for the three restaurateurs who are hanging in and doing everything they can to, uh, you know, when I look at it, you're keep, they're keeping us fed. They're keeping us fed and they're keeping us entertained and they're allowing us to get out of, you know, this self-imposed sometimes quarantine. Um, so I think anything we can do to help them, but I, I would give the cautionary tale here. We've got to do it quick. Whatever state government does has to do this quickly. Um, you the know, feds can step in too. They have a lot more money. Understood, but the feds is a dysfunctional circus at this point. You know it and I know it. 
Um, so I guess my question is, whatever we can do on the media center side for um, advertising, you know, publicizing what the efforts that are needed, we're gonna continue doing it. We are running low on time. I do wanna thank you, Senator Jalen, once again, from the independent group, Jess Willis, from the um, Za and Ivu restaurant group, Steve Curlin, and from uh, Mike's Food and Spirits, Davis Square, largest real estate patio I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> Maria DeSisto. Best wishes to all of you. We will see you real soon. Thank you, Senator Jalen. And thank you, everybody. On behalf of the Somerville Media Center, I'm Joe Lynch. Please stay safe, stay informed, and support your local restaurants.